Hey, good morning. Thank God it's Friday. It's the 15 minute faith fill up. The senior pastor Derek Galloway at the Connected Christian Church. I'm excited you decided to spend your morning with us. You've been with us all five days, so I'm excited now. We got to the end of another week. God is faithful. And if you know that God is faithful, you ought to give him a hand clap of praise. Put your claps right there in the chat right now because he brought you a mighty long way. As a matter of fact, he brought you all the way. So if you know that you wouldn't have made it without him, you ought to let it be known. So, hey, listen, you know, I'm super excited. We got a lot of great things going on today. Tonight is our worship night. It's our partnership with Beautiful Mess Ministries. And that's one of our community partners that also helps with and created our hand in hand mission. Uh, where we are able to exhibit what our mission statement is and connect our community to the compassion of Christ. But tonight, tonight, tonight at 7 p.m. at 107 East Beard between State and Salina, it is our worship night. This has been a long time coming because the last worship night we were scheduled to have was at the beginning of the pandemic. And that's when everything stopped. That's when our world stopped. But you know what didn't stop? our relationship with Christ Jesus. So what we're going to do tonight is we're going to come together. We're going to mobilize in music. We are going to unite and we're going to sing songs of praise unto our Lord. You are invited. Yes, you, you, and you are invited to worship with us on tonight. So that's at 7 p.m. Tomorrow at 10.30, between 10.30 and 11, we'll mobilize at the church and we'll go out into Sankofa Park, which is at the corner of Wood and Salina, right where it meets, right at that little juncture. And we invite you to come out and let's serve our community. We have a wonderful time distributing clothing and food and glad tidings and prayer. It's something that's been going on consistently for the last two and a half, almost three years. So we want to encourage you, please, ma'am, please, sir, please come be a part of that. Everybody is welcome. There is nobody that is turned away. So listen, we're going to get into our faith fill up on this eve, this morning, and we're going to be coming from uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse number 7, where it says, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. If you're following along with us on our Faith Life app, you'll see this right there at the bottom of our website. So we want to talk about casting your anxieties, your cares, your concerns on the Lord because he cares for you. Let's pray and let's get into our word. Father, we thank you right now for another opportunity in life, health, and strength, for this opportunity to be a blessing to others as you've been a blessing to us. Now, Father, we thank you for this fill-up, for the lives that is being touched, for the transformation is creating, for the connection to your, your compassion that it allows us to do. Now, Father, open every heart, mind, and ear to be receptive so that we would know what thus saith the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so listen, we're going to have a couple of quick announcements. And uh, we always say announcements. We're going to run a couple of commercials, all right? And these commercials are going to be regarding uh, the life coaching and uh, the, the book focus that we're studying in our, on our Bible study. I want you to pay close attention because this is something that has been a lifelong mission that we would be able to reach out into our community beyond our four walls and be a blessing. So come right back, take this time, get somebody into your circle. Let's make sure we have everything in order. Let's make sure that we're ready and we are prepared. And we'll be right back after this. It's worship night tonight, Friday, March the 4th at 7 p.m. Come and join with us as we unite in music in preparation for our upcoming hand-in-hand -hand mission. This is an opportunity for everyone to come together and honor our commitment to connecting our community to the compassion of Christ. We unite in music and mobilize in mission with our partners, Beautiful Mess Ministries. This is an all hands on deck weekend because we also have Communion Sunday coming up and it's March 6th at the 10 a.m. service. Come, let's handle our missional duties as Christians.
right, we're back. Fantastic. I'm glad you came back with us. Hopefully you invited at least one or two people to come and get this fill up with you. I'm going to be coming from the New Living Translation of the Holy Writ. I'm in 1 Peter chapter 5, and I'm going to start uh, right in, so we can get into our text, but I want to walk you through verse 1 and then get you to verse 7. It says, And now a word to you who are elders in the church. Yesterday we talked about young people making their commitment to the gods uh, instead of making their commitment to God. They're little gods, they're little G's, you know, chasing the bag, chasing job, chasing relationships, things along that line, and you need to be chasing the things of God, not the things of the world. So now we're talking to the elders in church, where Peter says, I too am an elder and a witness to the sufferings of Christ, and I too share in his glory when he is revealed to the whole world. And as a fellow elder, I appeal to you, care for the flock. Listen, we have such a tendency of casting those who are uh, who are kind of young or who are not where we are we cast them out and this is telling you to care for the flock of God that God has entrusted to you watch over it willingly not grudgingly not for what you will get out of it because you are eager to serve God you know as pastors as leaders as elders uh, we don't want to get to a point where we're looking to make um, you know financial gain out of the people of God but what we can deposit into the people of God and we ought to do so with a cheerful heart pastoring is not for the weak I'm gonna tell you that right now it's not for the weak because there's gonna be people that are gonna walk away from you there's gonna be people that are gonna talk about you there's gonna be people that are gonna uh, make drag your name through the mud all for the sake of making themselves look bigger and better and the truth of the matter is, is when you go through this, if you're not cut out for it, if you're not designed for it, you know, then there's always going to be a problem. One thing that I've learned is that people that choose peace and choose the blessings of God over everything else have a tendency to deal with this work a bit better than those individuals that want to wake up, as they say nowadays, and choose violence. Uh, I'm not with that. You know, I would rather have peace in my life and have a few people following and have a large congregation and always have conflict. So I want to do what is right before the Lord and I want to do so with a cheerful spirit. The Bible is telling you that you ought not to be doing this to see what you can gain, but to see what you can give. Don't lord over the people assigned to your care, but lead them by your own good example. Uh, we give this example with giving our seed, giving our tithe and offering uh, in verse number three to where I tell my congregation, those of you that know me, say I will never ask you to go where I'm not willing or unable to go. So we lead by example. True leaders lead from the front, not from the back. You know, I don't want to get to a point to where I'm telling you, this is what God says, this is what God says, and I'm not doing myself what God says. Believe me, I'm one of the first partakers of the word when it first comes forth. If it cuts you once, it cut me twice, going in and then coming out. So, you know, when you receive the word, you know, it's like a two-edged sword, and that's what you have to begin to look at. We don't lord over people that are assigned to us by God. We, we help to get them to the point where their relationship is in order. And when the great shepherd appears, verse 4, you'll receive a crown of never-ending glory and of honor. In the same way, you who are younger must accept the authority of elders, and all of you dress yourselves in humility as you relate to one another, for God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. You know, one of the things I, that we talk about every Sunday is uh, my mistrust and disdain for church folk. Church folk know all the right things to say. They know how to pick them up, how to put them down. They know all the church cliches. They want to call you a doc and everything else going all the way across but without having true relationship. They may seem shiny, but they don't have any oil. They may seem really uh, uh, polished, but there's no oil of anointing resting in their life. And the reason why there's no oil is because it's all of a side. It's not the accurate thing. And, and if you're not careful, you'll be in a position where you'll fall for something that you ought not fall for. But here's the thing, and I need you to understand this in verse 5, the B portion. It says, God opposes the proud and gives grace to the humble. So, you ought to humble yourselves under the mighty power of God, and at the right time, in due season, in due time, he will lift you up in honor. 
That's why we always talk about not despising small beginnings. There's a lot of ministries that may not have 15, 20 people, but they have a great relationship with God. And there's congregations, five, 600 people, and everyone's walking around broken because they don't have that solid relationship. So in due time, God will elevate you to a point where he can have your name uh, be able to have honor because ultimately he gets all the honor. Give all your cares, here we are to our key scripture, give all your cares and your worries to God because he cares about you. This is an interesting portion of text. I've walked you through seven verses and I've done so in such a way to know that God is no respecter of person. If he did it in the lives of Peter and the other disciples that walked with him that became the apostles of the first century church, he'll do it in your life. Be not weary in your well-doing. It may not seem like everyone's listening. It may not seem like they're getting with you in praise and worship. It may not seem like they're in a position where they're understanding the word. It may not seem like they, they really understand you as a person and that when you are giving them the good news, the gospel of Christ Jesus, that they're getting with you at that time. But I'm here to tell you this morning on this Faithful Up for today, Friday, that when you do what is right before the Lord, first and foremost, and you do what is pleasing before him, not to put your name in lights because God will elevate you and your gift will make room for you, but you do it for the sake that it's the right thing to do. You do the right thing at the right time for the right reason, for the right people, and God will elevate you. I am a true believer that everything that God has for you is for you, and it will come to you in such a way that man will not be able to take credit for it. So what you ought to do is when you get nervous, when you get anxious, when you're going through your struggles that impact your ministry opportunity, and now understand this as well, ministry is not relegated just to having a microphone in the front of the church house. Ministry is based on your relationship with God and how you transfer that relationship that you have with God to his people. When you're able to do that, God gets the glory. And when he gets the glory, he picks you up. He puts you in your proper place. He'll, it, it, it's your time when it's your time. And before it's your time, you won't get the chance to really jump into the blessings of God. But when it is your time, when it is your season, when it is your opportunity, God will be able to do exceeding abundantly above all that can be hoped, dreamed, or asked. Now, I need you to catch this part right here. It's telling you that when you have your anxieties, not if, when you have your fears, not if, that if you trust in the Lord and you put your cares on him, you bring them to his altar, you lay them at his feet. He will take care of you because he loves you. I need you to tap yourself on the chest and put it in the chat that God loves me. How do I know this? Because John the third chapter, verse number 16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that those that would believe would not perish but have everlasting life. Are you a believer? Are you someone that can receive the blessings of God and pass those on in your community? I want to hold you to the test. And if you say you love God because he heard your cry, I want you to join with us in solidarity and in union and in prayer. Coming this Sunday, if you don't have a church home, I need you to go ahead and, and join with us this Sunday at 10 a.m. We're located at 107 East Beard between State and Salina in the beautiful city of Syracuse. Uh, our service time starts at 10 a.m. You see it scrolling down there at the bottom. Uh, we got a great time for you. It's Communion Sunday. So not only are we having our worship night on tonight, but we're also having our hand-in-hand -hand mission on tomorrow. And then it's turning around and doing Communion Sunday. This is an opportunity to be able to remember the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, where his body was broken for us and his blood was shed to atone for multitudes of sins, not just for your sins, but for my sins and for the sins of those around you. We don't get what we deserve. We get his grace and his mercy because what we deserve is based off of our work. And we were workers in iniquity. We were workers in sin. Let us come together and remember his sacrifice. 
So this has been your 15 minute faith fill up. Again, Senior Pastor Derek Galloway, super excited that we made it through another week. You ought to give God some praise, give him your hand claps, show us some love. If you enjoy these videos, you ought to like this particular video. If you want to make sure you're getting somebody else the opportunity to know that they are loved, that God has not forsaken them, that God has not walked away from them, you ought to share this content on their page. If you're in a position where you want to get this, if you're on our YouTube channel, you want to become one of our subscribers, go ahead and hit that subscribe button right there at the bottom, and then you'll get our content. But here's the blessing behind being a member of our eConnect Church and subscribing to our videos. Not only will you get our Faith Phillips Monday through Friday, which are designed with you in mind, but you'll also be notified when we go live on Sundays for our worship service at 10 a.m. Yes, we are still in person, but we are still yet in a hybrid environment because we find that there are some individuals that have never make it to church, but they'll make it on YouTube. So become a subscriber and you'll be able to uh, get this content as well as our Tuesday night transformations. Uh, we'll be able to get all of that access, plus access to over 200 videos in our archive. If you want to follow us on our Faith Life app, there are videos going back three years. Our podcast is available of our Sunday services. So please, ma'am, please, sir, don't wait, don't hesitate. Let's participate in sharing the gospel and spreading the good news of Christ Jesus. So we're going to pray, and I want you to have a good day this morning because you started out with God, and God will be with you all the way throughout. Let's pray. Father, we thank you right now for another opportunity to come here and to receive a word particularly designed for me. You made it for me, you created it for me, you developed it for me, and you made sure that I knew that I was still loved. I cast my cares, my fears, and my anxieties upon you now, Lord, and I ask that you would do what you are famous for and heal my broken heart, heal my aged body, heal my messed up mental mindset, heal as only you can. If this is your prayer, you ought to say amen and amen. Hey, been a 15 minute faith fill up. Senior Pastor Derek Galloway, I'll either see you tonight, tomorrow, or Sunday. This is a faith filled weekend. Let's do what thus saith the Lord. You be blessed.